Hello everyone and welcome to The Daily HUD where we give you the latest esports news. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Sierra. And I'm Dom. And hey, we're looking for your clips. That's right, your highlights, your bloopers. Send them on over to the link down in the description. And of course, uh, if there's any games that we're not covering, let us know so that we can actually cover them. Because today, we're taking a look at the LEC and the LCS finals that are happening. Then we're tuning into the ESL Pro League preview and the results of the first day of week two of the Overwatch. League and finally a preview for the weekend. Of course we've still got Rainbow Six to talk about, Fortnite World Cup news, Twitch rivals happening this weekend, and RLCS week two. There is a lot going on so let's get started. Fantastic. Our first coverage of the day will take us to the conclusion of the LEC playoffs and their interesting matches. After the Juggernaut match last week, we are expected to see some huge matches this weekend. On Saturday, we get round three of the LEC or semifinals for anyone who is unfamiliar with the setup. Fnatic and Origin are set to face off. Two Giants are looking to go to the finals. Fnatic's objective is to be on the top team again and take down G2 for them to be at the top of the standing. But with Origin in there, it'll be a battle to remember. The LEC semifinals will take place tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The set will be a best of five, and the winner of the match will meet G2 in the finals on Sunday. We'll be reporting the results on Monday, so be sure not to miss them. Now, there's still a lot more league coverage to talk about because this Saturday is the conclusion of the LCS Spring Split, in which Team Liquid is going to meet TSM in a fantastic giant versus giant, rivalry versus rivalry battle. Bjergsen versus Doublelift. Oh, Both boy. of them currently have five championship titles. This is number six. Who's going to upset it? Now, as a preview to this matchup, I got a chance to sit down with Aiden Zyrene Moon, previously color commentator for the North American LCS, just last night. We did a long 30-minute interview. You can see the whole rest of that interview down in a link below in the description. But for now, let's take a look at some of his preliminary thoughts on what we should be what we should be watching out for. Yeah, do you have anything that you think you could say towards perhaps some of our less experienced with league viewers who are saying, oh, my friends are saying the finals are going on, I wanna watch, but I don't know what's happening. What should these folks be looking for coming into this grand finals? So for people who don't know League of Legends, and I guess I would say like haven't followed it historically, I think the things that you need to know is this is probably the finals that has the most history in it. And if you're coming in without knowing it, you know, it will, it will hinder your enjoyment of it. And that's why a lot of people are hyped up about it because there's so much history here for everyone across the board. Broken Blade and Akkadian are the ones that don't have as much history, but then the rest of the rosters will start with Bjergsen. Bjergsen was the golden child of the NALCS when he came over from Denmark, when he came over from the EU LCS. He was the man to beat, and he has always been in conversation for the greatest of all time for NALCS. And the conversation has usually been dominated by him. It was dominated by him for years. And then Doublelift is the one who slowly but surely started winning titles on different teams, even some alongside Bjergsen. And now he's gone off by himself. Ever since TSM didn't have Doublelift alongside them, they've struggled now to win or even place highly in the championship. This is Sven's first replacement for Doublelift. This is his first time making it to the finals here in NA, and he's been here for over a year at this point. So this is where the two people who have been in the conversation and have gone back and forth between who is the greatest of all time for the NA LCS with Bjergsen and Doublelift, this is where the two of them start to actually figure out between them who is number one. And you even look at the MVP votes, you look at things like how dominant they've been, Granted, Bjergsen has been with the same team, Team Solo Mid, for his entire career over here in the NALCS, or I guess the LCS now, and Doublelift has swapped teams. But with Bjergsen, he was able to win, I believe, five championships with TSM. And then Doublelift has five championships as well after his last one with Team Liquid. This is where somebody takes the lead, because before, Bjergsen was beating him five championships to three and then Doublelift is caught up and if he wins these three in a row he 
he has more trophies than the person that people have always considered to be the best in North America. And you go back a few years, you go back to, I believe it's spring 2015, before Counter Logic Gaming wins their first uh, Madison Square Garden, that tournament in 2015 summer, Doublelift has zero trophies. Doublelift's trophy case was a meme where he always talked trash, but he never had anything to like prove that he was a good player. People always go, you're good, but where are your trophies? And since those four years, he's been able to rack up five trophies. He's about to go for six here in spring of 2019. So he's setting basically a new trend of the rubber banding back in after having a career that was just plagued with trash talk where he wasn't able to back it up or wasn't able to show results for it. Now the results speak for themselves. He doesn't need to talk trash. He still does it for fun, but he doesn't need to anymore because he's about to become the greatest of all time in LCS history if he can take down Bjergsen in this match. He'll be more decorated. He'll be the person that everybody can just... You know, people were pointing at him not having trophies. Now you can point at him having all the trophies that he needs to shut people up. Again, that was just a preview of our conversation with Zyrene. You can see the whole thing later towards the end of the video. And again, I'm excited to see the matchup as well. Bjergsen versus Doublelift has been a clash for the ages. And then you add Jensen. I don't know, I could talk about them forever. But hey, that's going to be the conclusion of the LCS Spring Split Finals this Saturday at 4 p.m. Uh, hopefully, we'll get the chance to give you all the results of that coverage on Monday. So be sure to tune in. Let's talk some CSGO news. Tomorrow, the ESL Pro League Season 9 debuts with a brand new qualifying system. In last season's system, each team would play each other twice, and the top seven teams from the EU and the top six teams from North America and others from around the globe would play in the ESL Pro League Finals to compete for number one. This year, though, the format is just a little bit different. Each team has been placed in a group based on their ESL CSGO world ranking system per their region. The group three is a best of three. The European League has 16 split teams into four groups with the top teams of each of those groups automatically qualifying for the ESL Season 9 Finals. The second and third place teams will go to the second round of groups to try and qualify. First and second place teams of the those second groups will qualify for the remaining EU sports. It was kind yeah. of a bit to untangle there, but I hope it got across. Yeah, yeah. but again, the whole idea is two rounds of groups. In the Americas region, we're going to have 12 teams from North America, four teams from South America. Uh, the North American teams will be split into three separate groups, while the South American team will get their own. Similar to Europe, the top team from each group will automatically qualify into the finals. Then, both the second and third place teams from the North American and South American groups will combine into an additional, this is that second round of groups, to fight for the remaining spots. The difference between Europe and North America, though, is that in the second round of the American region, only the first place teams will qualify for the finals. So a little bit more difficult in the Americas region. Um, that said, if you don't get your initial berth, while it is harder to qualify, the chance is still there. Fantastic. Well, I wish you all good luck, and um, it looks like it's going to be a pretty challenging game with those teams. Well, yeah. Yeah. North America, go! In recent news, ESL confirmed that Luminosity will take the final vacant spot. The spot was vacant because Rogue, the team that previously held their own spot in the league, had disbanded. The players, MSL and Nico, went to Optic, Sick went to Complexity, and Vice went to Cloud9 as a trial player. Luminosity claiming the spot is controversial, seeing as as Luminosity was relegated to a lower league after their failure during ESL Pro League Season 8. Oops. This controversy stems from the fact that the two other teams, Singularity and Team Furia, seem to be obvious choices, with Team Singularity getting third place in the qualifying matches to get into the Pro League, and Team Furia winning the most recent season of the Mountain Dew League, aka the league before the ESL Pro League. Many fans are disappointed by Luminosity's placement, however, we'll have to wait and see if Luminosity can perform well or if they will fail as most fans have predicted. Of course, time will only harsh, tell. Another important criticism. change, though, is the transition for the Americas and the European region to be playing all of their matches on land, local area network. Now, this is a huge advantage for teams like Liquid and MIBR, who are set to excel due to their voluminous LAN event experiences. Uh, elsewhere, though, in Oceania and 
Asia, all games will be played online. In addition, after the conclusion of the most recent major, there are a handful of new changed rosters. One third of the European teams and almost one half of the North American teams have made roster changes, and we hope to see how effectively the new rosters play. The first match of the ESL Pro League Season 9 will be a Battle of the Danes, with Team North going up against a brand new Optic Gaming. Those matches are set to start today. today. So keep yourself tuned to Twitch to catch up on all that information. April 12th. In the last of our CSGO news, the Blast Pro Miami kicks off today. This event has a $250,000 prize pool with 125 k going to the first place teams. Competing are Australia's Navi, Liquid, FaZe, MIBR and Cloud9. Mm -hmm. The event, like all Blast Pro Series events, lasts only two days with each team playing against each other in a round robin, best of one system. The top two teams will play in a BO3 grand finale. The third place team gets to challenge any of the remaining teams in the Blast Pro standoff. These standoffs are five 1v1 aim duels in which the players on each team face off against the other with different guns. The first player to reach the winning seven rounds ends that game and by the end of the standoff whichever team that has the most rounds will be the winner claiming that sweet sweet bonus of twenty thousand dollars who do you think is going to win the event you can leave your prediction in the comments below and this is local everyone yep, this is down I'm in excited. miami big thank you to special guest michael jordan for his contribution in talking about csgo Just wait that. that michael jordan Mm, not that Michael Jordan, different Michael Jordan. We're talking about the copy dog who chimed in with all of that sweet, juicy information on CSGO. So if you guys want to contribute as well, hop into the comments and let us know what you think. But now we get a chance to turn our attention towards Rocket League because there's still so much more esports going on this weekend. Elsewhere this weekend, the Rocket League Championship Series returns with its second weekend of play. Starting off at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and running until about 1 a.m., the RLCS covers North America, Oceania, and Europe. The European side of the league is set to return on Sunday at noon Eastern, running until the last game of the weekend at 4 p.m. The weekend is also marks the start of Oceania's region's play rounds. With the recent news of the RLCS and Rocket Rocket League's introduction of revenue sharing, teams and the RLCS should see more incentive to invest and grow both the league's infrastructure and the teams themselves. Also starting this weekend is going to be TwitchCon Europe, which hopefully marks a very large event in Berlin on both the 13th and 14th. While this convention isn't specifically targeted at competitive events, TwitchCon Europe is going to feature the return of Twitch rivals, and we get the chance, in which we get the chance, to witness some high-level Apex Legends and some spectacular League of Legends action. Now, the League of Legends event is more fun than anything else, but this is what is currently the highest level of Apex Legends play, and it looks like it's going to be echoing the Fortnite Online Qualifier format, in which players are given a certain window of time to queue up for a handful of games and earn as many points as possible. Now, Apex still lacks the ability to spectate in-game and create custom lobbies, which makes creating tournaments and leagues and seasons a lot more difficult. Fortnite seems to have that capacity with lobbies and custom uh, spectates. However, it's choosing to avoid that for a tournament format for their World Cup online open qualifiers over the next 10 weeks. And if Apex is hoping to compete, they're going to have to overcome the massive financial backing that Fortnite has alongside the juggernaut of PUBG, who has uh, spectate and custom lobbies, along with a much more established concrete player base. So let's have to see if Apex can compete. It is fun and compelling to play. Is it a compelling experience to watch? To watch, exactly. Yeah. It's hard to tune into those. And now turning our attention towards Fortnite, the Fortnite World Cup Online Open starts tomorrow. Eligible players in each server region will compete to qualify for the Fortnite World Cup Finals on their platform of choice. Globally, a $1 million prize pool will be distributed. Each Open will occur over two rounds of play during the weekend, with each server having their own respective tournament. The format follows what we're seeing out of Apex Legends, unless it's Apex following Fortnite. Instead of putting players against each other, 
there will be a three hour time limit to play as many games as possible up to a limit of 10. In each game you can earn points for kills and higher placement and at the end of the three hour session the top 3,000 players with the highest points will advance to the online open finals on Sunday. Sunday is going to echo that format with a three hour session again playing up to 10 matches earning as many points as possible. However as noted on Epic Games website a small number of players varying from eight in Europe to one in Oceania and Asia depending on your region will then qualify for the World Cup finals but at the end of the day the prize payout tiers will give the players their own share of one million dollars which is pretty healthy when you take a look at it. And of course, if you do end up dropping out in this one tournament, you can compete next weekend or the weekend after, because this is just week one of 10. Wow. This specific weekend will focus on solo play, week two is going to be duos, and from there it will alternate with week three going back to solo, week four duos, so on all the way up to 10. This is really exciting. I mean, yeah. it's really connecting the whole world on our one one platform, and they all have a chance to compete and a chance to win. So mm -hmm. good luck to all of you out there playing Fortnite. Yeah, and of course this broadcast is set to, uh, we haven't seen any broadcast from Epic that is set to follow the organized structure. Apex has a similar problem with the lack of spectate, however, Fortnite is massive and we're really hoping that Fortnite can give us some sort of broadcast that can follow this event or if it is just going to be players creating their own thing all the way up until the end. Now Fortnite has the largest player base of Battle Royales being the first free to play to enter the market but they still have a few esports juggernauts to, juggernauts to contend with if they want to really be taken seriously and scattering weekly regular contests without a reliable viewing plan seems a little bit risky especially when there's 10 million dollars on the line. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean our fingers will be crossed and we'll be able to find a consistent platform and format soon. I really hope so because it's hard to tune in. All I'm seeing is a bunch of little clips. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to see some more. But hey, that's not all. We've also got some Rainbow Six. Looking towards Rainbow Six, the Pro League Season 9 starts in the Asia Pacific region this weekend with a prize pool of $27,000 and on April 20th we're also going to see Rainbow Six at DreamHack, also echoing that format in Rio de Janeiro, so we're looking forward to that. Of course, this weekend we also have the Rainbow Six Siege European Pro League. Uh, this week we've got a very exciting matchup. This week we'll be looking at one major matchup. Both finals from the Rainbow Six Invitational meet up are head to head in the match. With both teams coming in with big momentum, this is a rematch everyone can't wait to see. They will be opening the match in week 12. Rainbow Six Siege Pro League will start or have started already today with the schedule full of action. To start the day, Team Empire will face off in a rematch with G2, then Team Chaos will take on Le Slim Esports. <laughs> Next <Le> Team <laughs> Navi will go up against Team Mouse, and to close off the day, Team Secret Shh and Penta Esports look to gain a win. Good luck yeah. all you guys. And now for our final coverage, Overwatch League starts again this weekend with week two having started yesterday that's Thursday and the results weren't surprising giving the amount of strength that this particular group had. Starting off the day Paris Eternal took the Florida Mayhem full force in their own matchup. It was no surprise seeing them come out strong after their previous performance in the last week going four and zero. Now they showed no signs of slowing down with this new momentum, questions on where they'll be heading in Stage 2 are still in the air. Now, the Paris Eternal were able to defeat Florida Mayhem 3-1. to one. Oh, how sad. Oh, mm, I hate our it when home that team. Happens. For the Go second <laughs> yeah. MIA, MIA. For the second <laughs> match of the day, we had the New York Excelsior take on Washington Justice. Few words can be said about this match. New York showed why they were the top team, only to be rivaled by the Vancouver Titans. Their strength only appeared to get stronger and better as the weeks go by. The New York Excelsior defeated Washington Justice with a 4 and 0 victory. Not bad. For the final match of our coverage, Overwatch League and Vancouver Titans extended their undefeated streak in the standings. And we'll hopefully see more of that in the future as the, uh, the Vancouver Titans faced off against Seoul Dynasty. And with authority, they showed why they were the number one team in the OWL. The Titans did nothing to back off the Dynasty team, but Seoul was able to get at least a round win off of the Titans, though questions were rising up as to where they would 
will be heading in Stage 2. The Vancouver Titans ended up taking the series with a 3-1 victory overall. Stage 2 will begin today at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Starting off the day, Los Angeles Valiants going head-to-head -head with Atlanta Rain. Boston Uprising will try to win off Hangzhou Sparks. And closing out the second day, the Wangzhou Charge. Wangzhou Charge. Wangzhou Charge will face off against San Francisco's Shock. That's it for today's coverage of the Daily HUD. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest update in eSports. Once again, I am Sierra. And I'm I am Dom, and of course, if you want to participate on the eSports channel, send us your clips, info at eSportsChannel.com. It's down in the description below. And of course, all comments. Are we not talking about Smash? Are we not talking about Dragon Ball Fighters? Are we not talking about Street Fighter? Let us know in the comments so that we can upgrade and improve. And of course, we can put all of those on our massive 63, 63 feet wide television. television absolutely spectacularly large super huge but for now as we wish you good night we will part with the full interview that i had last night with zyrene oh, to get yeah. his full perspective on the north american lcs finals happening tomorrow but in the meanwhile thank you for watching good night and gg, GG. <laughs> hello me hi uh i am here with zyrene i just tossed to myself um, I'm here with Zyrene, that's not a euphemism, I swear. <laughs> and we're here to talk about the North American LCS Grand Finals, which are happening this Saturday with two really big names, Team Solo Mid and Team Liquid. But before we get into that, Zyrene, it's good to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. We used to work together a few years ago, yeah. and you know, everybody remembers the, uh, the, the relegation tournament. <laughs> you know, it, it's good to be back. It's good to be uh, talking with you. Yeah, I'm still, sometimes I'm tempted to change my banner to that gif, just because it's so iconic, it's so good. People still approach me and say, do you remember that moment? You, yeah, that was you, right? Yep, yep, you can't forget those moments. <laughs> if you ask me about my dancing, it always, oh, yeah. they stick with you forever. <laughs> dancing into the infinite. But hey, let's get to uh, the Team Liquid versus Team Solo Mid match that's happening this weekend. Um, obviously, Team Liquid, they seem to be the favorites coming into this. They're, at the very least, the defending champions. They look strong. There's an article on the Lee Sports right now from Keen Lamb saying that right now, Team Liquid are 18-2 and two in playoffs ever since they picked up Double Lift. Uh, this is a real strong roster. Do you think it's feasible for Team Solo Mid to take them down? Are we going to have a competition, or is Team Liquid just going to stomp over again? So... At the end of the day, I do think that Team Liquid will probably stomp over TSM. But given the chances that I think that they have, I think that they are the second best team right now. Like, they almost lost to Cloud9, or Cloud9, I guess, almost beat them in that five-game series. But what I took away from that series was that Cloud9, they're hitting a bit of what I would consider a cap for that team. Uh, and they've already kind of approached where that is. And I think that given the velocity of Cloud9 slowly trending a little bit downward with TSM trending upward very quickly. I think that we're approaching that that point where TSM passes Cloud9 as the second best team in the league. So I think that they stand a better chance up against TL than Cloud9 would have. So if Cloud9 had won that series, I think that it would have been, in my opinion, I would have been able to say, it's probably just going to be a stomp. It's probably going to be another 3-0, 3-1. I don't think it's going to distance. But against TSM, I think that with Zix on that lineup and the fact that he's got a lot of uh, adaptability as a coach and the fact that that lineup is put in so much, because I feel like they have so much to prove here, right? It's Broken Blades for split in the LCS. It's uh, basically you have Acadian coming in and now he's being that Chad jungler that Bjergsen wanted. And there's a big chip on their shoulders and they're up against TL who they have a lot to prove against. So I think that they are the second best team right now, and I think that they will give them a run for their money, still favoring TL. Mm -hmm. So if it is going to be some big change out of TSM in order to defeat Team Liquid, what, what do we do? Just put something bad in the cereal for Team Liquid that morning to change it around? I mean, we've got Kale. Do we just give Broken Blade Kale five games in a row, or even better, three games in a row? Well, so I don't think that that's something that will happen. Uh, TL has been incredibly good at lowering variance in terms of what can go wrong in a game and I feel like they very rarely get kind of checkmated because I think that their players pools are much larger than people give them credit for except they can pretty much play any jungler uh, impact even has played a lot of top laners and it hasn't just been tanked you know there was that whole like oh he's a Maokai bot go play Scion 
Like his most played right now is Kennen, followed by Urgot, Jace, and Scion. But then he's got like a dabble in kind of everything. A Lissandra, a J4, Aatrox, Victor, Silas, Akali, Vladimir. He's got pretty much everything. I think there's only one or two tanks in the entire like roster that Impact has played this split. So him and Broken Blade are actually very similar right now in the way that they're playing, or at least the champions that they're playing. And you just kind of need to watch out a little bit more for Broken Blades, like Vladimir and stuff. So I think that that really won't be an issue in terms of champion pools. I think that TL does their research. I think the way that TSM would win this is I think that it would come down to Bjergsen having just a leg up over Jensen, who has seemed to have a bit of a mental block versus Bjergsen. Jensen has never won an NALCS championship. He went to TL so that he could do that. He left Cloud9, who had made world semifinals, made it the furthest that North America had ever been. He left that team, said, this is as far as we will ever get. I want to go further. I want to have a championship. Now he's on TL for that reason. He's there at that number one spot, waiting to take down Bjergsen, which is something that he has never been able to do in those hyped up matches, in those important matches. And I think that's what I would end up causing them to crumble but now they have people like poor jj who's a big spine and backbone for the team if things do go wrong but if they are going to go wrong i think it's in that mid lane. Mm -hmm. and that's always seems to have been the conversation with jensen he was supposed to be the bjergsen 2.0 the second dane in the mid lane to try and replace him but it's always Bjergsen who's come out on top. Uh, and it does create a compelling conversation when you look at the two in their styles in laning as well. Bjergsen, at least in my history with the NALCS, he has powerful moments. However, I have seen him falter in clutch situations, whereas I've seen Jensen excel in clutch situations in games that don't matter. So when you juxtapose the two side by side, though they are similar in being exceptional mid laners, you get to see these differences and variants, and that will, of course, alter how the team styles uh, shake out. Yeah, and I think the, the cool thing to like consider here is Bjergsen has taken a more supportive role for the team overall. Uh, his, his champion pool has been favoring things like Lissandra and Zillian, and even then the Zoe for like the Pope, right? Those are his three most played champions. And he doesn't have anything like an Orianna in sight so far this split. Whereas you flip over to somebody like Jensen and his top two are Syndra, Orianna. Then he's got like LeBlanc, Cassio. So like he's kind of stuck with the classics here. He hasn't played a Rise game though, but he's stuck with the classics. He's only got one Lissandra game, zero Zillion. And whereas your boy Bjergsen, he's playing more for the team. And I think that that's what indicates to me that if Jensen ends up having a rough lane where he goes even, Bjergsen usually will have more map impact uh, in uh, in the head-to-head -head matchup. That's what I'm worried about is the Lissandras, the Zillions, when you reach team fights versus the things that he likes to play, right? Because mid Oriana versus Lissandra, you push and then you wait for the team fight shockwave or the pick if you're the Lissandra. But then the Zillion versus, you know, the Syndra, that's just a flat shutdown matchup. Mm -hmm. So... I feel like both of them will be kind of trying to get the the Zoe or something like that. Uh, but I think that, you know, the the champions that they'll kind of gravitate towards, Bjergsen does still have a leg up in what he likes to play so far in this split. Granted, they, they are very good players and they can pretty much play whatever they want. Yeah. But I think that they the things that they have been favoring, everybody's got those champions. It happens with pro players too, right? Where, sure, you'll expand your champion pool. But you always have those ones that it's like riding a bike. You can just get back up there and play those champions, comfort, you're cool with blind picking them. They're good to go. Uh, I think that that's really what they've been uh, that they've been using as those champions for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. then, of course, you add in the jungler interaction along with perhaps a top laner who gets a good teleport or even a roam from world champion core JJ. I mean, can we take a minute to talk about just the raw talent that Team Liquid is bringing with this lineup? It used to be TSM was all the talent in North America, but how the times have changed. Oh yeah, like Team Liquid paid by Steve was a meme, but <laughs> it's real. And Sponsored start... by, Mot what was it, HTC? It was HTC. Oh God, yeah, but it's very real, right? Steve is trying to win. That guy went through years and years of you know curse and then team liquid being a team that wasn't in playoffs at all they come to their first playoffs they crush it they get first place and that's where tsm doesn't make it far at all then they win the next one and then right now they're looking for the three peak which is something that TS only tsm has done is win three in a row and when tsm stopped uh, trying on their fourth one that's when tl took the throne so 
Now this is kind of the two powers in the last three years coming head to head against each other when it wasn't really something that they had clashed on before. It had really been like TSM is still trying to battle Cloud9, who's trying to battle TL, but now TSM get to face TL directly and we'll see what basically these these rosters have kind of purchased in terms of talent uh, against each other. Because you look at what they did on TL, the whole impact, Smithy, double lift, and then adding in Jensen when they had Pobelter before and they had won back-to-back -back championships. Like they upgraded mid lane by getting Jensen. And people thought Jensen was just gonna be on Cloud9 ever since he replaced High. Like that was gonna be a gimme for the rest of time. And he showed that he has motivation to do more and now he's paired up with double lift and then you throw in core jj who i will say skeptical at first this guy was an adc in north america then when he went back to korea swapped the support and he just did wonderful things for genji for samsung and being in that finalist at worlds and then also being a world champion he's come here and shown that it's not just a fluke, right? We've had some people who win a world championship and you're like, are you the person who got carried to that world championship? What can you do for your team? And poor JJ has fully embraced the idea that supports have a lot of agency in the game. And you see that where ADCs like double lift, this is not, this has been a almost like double lift less year so far where his pop-off plays are very few and very far between. Whereas poor JJ has all the opportunities to save him to allow him to play forward, to engage himself, and it's really been a supports playground as well as junglers to shine. I think the ADCs are falling into that, you know, the pattern that happens where it takes too long for them to ramp up. So there's like 25, 30 minutes of the game where everyone else gets to shine. And a lot of the games aren't even going that long anymore. So they're just that backup damage. They're that consistent source. And I feel as though that's that's something that's allowed for JJ to shine more and his strengths to be accentuated this split in particular. Yeah, uh, it's definitely shown with the team able to make it to playoffs so easily, it seems like by almost springboarding themselves through the semifinals in what some people are considering sort of a shrug off match against the Pobes previously of the team who just had one of the best best of fives of, I, I dare say his career just beforehand, a uh, spectacular play. I wanna say it was on the Zoe in game five that almost single-handedly won uh, for his team to advance them up against Team Liquid. But still looking towards this matchup overall, you mentioned you've got Team Liquid. What do you think the score line is going to be? Are we 3-0, 3-2? Are we gonna go the distance and get that silver scrapes? I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be, you know, it's always easiest to say 3-1. Uh, <laughs> that because, middle ground, yeah. Because you're only ever wrong by one game if that team <laughs> still wins. Sure. So, uh, I I actually think that it will be, I think it will be three one, because I believe that they may give a game up to somebody like Bjergsen having a pop off Kali, uh, one of those games where he's playing a zillion and they've shut him down, and it, it's been an awkward split for these teams to be completely honest, like. They've actually have they actually have opposite like side selection uh, choices here. If uh, when I was looking at it, TSM are five and four on blue side, but then they're fourteen and four on red side. So TSM actually end up with counter pick a lot of the time. In eighteen of their games, the other nine, so in two thirds of their games, they've been able to counter pick on red side. Whereas Team Liquid, they're four and one on red side. They've only played five red side games, and then when you look at their blue side. I believe they're like 13 and four. So I think they've actually played, I mean, let me just double check this one. <laughs> Good old yeah. fashioned napkin math. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I, it's a, uh, you know, sometimes the bars don't go. Uh, line up correctly, yeah. Line up correctly, yeah, it's 13 and four. So they have played 17 games on blue side and only five on red side so far this split for Team Liquid. They're pretty much inverted in terms of how much they've played on a single side. I'm really interested to see what happens when Team Liquid don't get priority champions that are just good in the meta and generalists, and they get to counterpick. Like, how punishing are their counterpicks? Because we've seen with TSM, with Bjergsen being able to pick a Lissandra for roaming, or get a Vladimir for Broken Blade, or even just have the Zillion there as a pocket pick for like a last pick. That means that TSM has made their counterpicks go further than what TL has been able to show us 
TL might have a ton of them, but no, I think that it'll go 3-1 because there might be something on red side that TSM is able to bust out, but I think that TL will still take it just because even though Jensen has that edge or has that kind of chip on his shoulder versus Bjergsen that I think may get to them in a final setting, may have some jitters. Uh, I mean, there's been so many famous moments of Jensen versus Bjergsen in finals in the past, right? You think about the Echo uh, versus Syndra matchup. You think about the moments where he hasn't been able to close games out and he's been trying to keep his team in it. I remember Talia games from him. Uh, and he has fallen short over and over again. And sometimes you get to that moment where you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to beat him. And you get too high feet. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a little bit of the Uzi moment where mm -hmm. without, at least for Uzi, without a doubt, he's the best AD carry in the LPL, no question. But you put him in semifinals, you put him in finals, and something is different. Yeah, it's like when you're trying to beat a boss in Sekiro and you finally <laughs> get him down and you're just like, it's one hit. There, it's one hit. <laughs> one hit and you read for it, right? Like you read for it and he swings at you. You're just like, ugh. Oh. Like your heart is racing even though it's like, you know you've got this yeah you mess it up i honestly it is a bit of a choke situation but the reason i'm calling 3-1 despite all that for tl is i think that when you're looking at choke factor you have to look at you have to look at acadian a bit he's somebody who's very unfamiliar to that enormous stage and i think that is going to be the biggest the biggest factor here yeah. because everybody else on the rosters like including broke broke blade have like some experience on that stage in a playoffs environment. Acadian is like really fresh, and he's the one that I'm really scared for. Because on the other side, you got Impact, Jensen, Double Lift Core, JJ, and, and you have all these people who have so much experience. Smithy, Jensen, like like I said before, these guys they should have their nerves under control. But then opposite side, Bjergsen, Sven. Those are the two you're looking at as the veterans. Smoothie on top of that a bit, but even though Andy, he's been to so many playoffs, he's still got that kind of like a nervous charm to him sometimes, like not always completely grounded. I think that sometimes in game, he just needs to focus up really hard and that'll go away. So I'm not as worried about him, but Acadian's the one where I think that he might, if he feels like he has something to prove, that's where you overplay. And as a jungler, that's such a dangerous thing to do is overplay but then it's also very dangerous to not play what you're given as a jungler and just do nothing so some laners can play back that's fine but you can't do that as a jungler because you are the heartbeat of the game at the start and we've seen so often a single weak link in a grand final situation against a team as stacked as team liquid can upset the whole matchup in um, yeah. a handful of plays uh, but yeah, do you have anything that you think you could say towards perhaps some of our less experienced with League viewers who are saying, oh, my friends are saying the finals are going on, I want to watch, but I don't know what's happening. What should these folks be looking for coming into this Grand Finals? So for people who don't know League of Legends, and I guess I would say like haven't followed it historically, I think the things that you need to know is this is probably the finals that has the most history in it and if you're coming in without knowing it you know it will it will hinder your enjoyment a bit and that's why a lot of people are hyped up about it because there's so much history here for everyone across the board broken blade and acadian are the ones that don't have as much history but then the rest of the rosters will start with bjergsen bjergsen was the golden child of the NALCS when he came over from Denmark, when he came over from the EU LCS. He was the man to beat, and he has always been in conversation for the greatest of all time for NALCS. And the conversation has usually been dominated by him. He was dominated by him for years. And then Doublelift is the one who slowly but surely started winning titles on different teams, even some alongside Bjergsen. And now he's gone off by himself Ever since TSM didn't have double lift alongside them, they've struggled now to win or even place highly in the championship. This is Sven's first replacement for double lift. This is his first time making it to the finals here in NA, and he's been here for over a year at this point. So this is where the two people who have been in the conversation and have gone back and forth between who is the greatest of all time for the NALCS with Bjergsen and double lift, this is where the two of them start to actually 
figure out between them who is number one. And you even look at the MVP votes, you look at things like how dominant they've been. Granted, Bjergsen has been with the same team, Team Solo Mid, for his entire career over here in the NALCS, or I guess the LCS now. And Doublelift has swapped teams. But with Bjergsen, he was able to win, I believe, five championships with TSM. And then Doublelift has five championships as well after his last one with Team Liquid. This is where somebody takes the lead. Because before, Bjergsen was beating him five championships to three. And then Doublelift is caught up. And if he wins these three in a row, he, he has more trophies than the person that people have always considered to be the best in North America. And you go back a few years, you go back to, I believe it's spring 2015, before Counter Logic Gaming wins their first uh, Madison Square Garden, that tournament in 2015 summer, Doublelift has zero trophies. Doublelift's trophy case was a meme where he always talked trash, but he never had anything to like, prove that he was a good player. People always go, you're good, but where are your trophies? And since those four years, he's been able to rack up five trophies. He's about to go for six here in spring of 2019. So he's setting basically a new trend of the rubber banding back in after having a career that was just plagued with trash talk where he wasn't able to back it up or wasn't able to show results for it. Now the results speak for themselves. He doesn't need to talk trash. He still does it for fun, but he doesn't need to anymore because he's about to become the greatest of all time in LCS history if he can take down Bjergsen in this match. He'll be more decorated. He'll be the person that everybody can just, if, you know, people are pointing at him not having trophies. Now you can point at him having all the trophies that he needs to shut people up. Greatest of all time, changing hands in a clear manner. Uh, because we hear the conversations all the time in basketball and in baseball, but in such a young sport like League of Legends, we're, what, nine years in? Yep. Uh, so that we are seeing this title changeover in the LCS is a very impactful moment overall. But hey, uh, Zyrene, uh, thank you so much for your time and talking with us. Have you got anything else that you'd like to add? This, this is Zyrene Soapbox. This is your chance <laughs> to freely tell us what you think. Uh, in terms of this matchup, like I think that this is the most important NALCS finals that we have had to date. Jensen can take down Bjergsen finally and get himself his first trophy ever. Doublelift can establish himself as the greatest of all time by taking down Bjergsen. But then on the opposite side, you have Bjergsen, who if he's able to fend off both of those things that are looming and trying to take him down and they are motivated because Bjergsen has just been the thorn in their side for years and has just been basically the LeBron James, the person to beat and people think he'd never be dethroned. He's had a few bad years now. If this is where he's able to pick himself up and he's able to get himself that sixth title and put some distance between himself and the people who have been chasing him and shut down Jensen again, the person who was brought over here to be his rival, then you silence people who have just been saying, Bjergsen's not as good as he used to be. And then you even just look at somebody like Smoothie, who he's trying to establish himself as a hard worker, right? He was benched in the previous split, and then he had to play on an Echo Fox, and then he was picked up by TSM, saying that he has potential, and you know he's motivated. He just beat Cloud9. He wants to win that title because it's eluded him as well from his time on Cloud9. And Andy's just been somebody who's been relegated before on a 10th place team. And now he finds himself in the finals again to try and take that title. There's so much history here, but you really do have to look at that mid lane. You have to look at Doublelift versus Bjergsen. You have to look at Jensen versus Bjergsen. That's where the attention is. That's where it has to be in this match. And I think that's how TSM wins, but it's also how TL, they can win as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Zyrene. Um, again, don't this, miss it. Don't miss it. Yeah, happening tomorrow as of the time that this video is going to be going live. Um, it's going to be a hype matchup. I'll be tuning in. I know you will as well. Maybe we'll do an online viewing party or something and see how we can make that happen. But hey, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time and have a good one. All right. Thank you, Dom.